Good Thursday morning, everyone. We are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Matthew Cheslock of Virtue Financial. Matthew, of course, the big story this morning, Facebook's miss, the stock. I mean, is this a re-rating of the stock, which, by the way, hit a record high just hours before those earnings came out? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the earnings, they were priced to perfection. No one expected this, you know, a 20% decline after, uh, you know, some of the, the analyst call that we got last night uh, did not go so well. So uh, is it a re-rating? Uh, I think you're going to have uh, a lot of investors that are going to say, you know what, I'm going to take a pass and see what the next quarter brings. Um, that was the worry that I thought in Netflix that we had after that, you know, with their numbers. Uh, these growth rates are, are almost unsustainable if you're going to think about it. So it, I, I guess it would need a re-rating at some point. Well, I mean, and Facebook kind of told you that the rest of the year may not be so rosy. So investors essentially have their answer in many regards. Yeah, but I think it's a wait and see attitude now. And, and I don't think you need to lump all the FANG stocks in at once. You know, Microsoft performed pretty well and we're going to get a pretty good look tonight on Amazon. So I think that's going to be the bigger barometer right now. Uh, Facebook hopefully is a one-off for the investing community, uh, but we certainly can find other leaders in this, in this market. Uh, and the energy names that we're going to see Friday might be the, an indicator of where money flow may, may travel. And you sort of alluded to this, but let's just make this clear for investors. Is Facebook a buy at these levels? Because it's now in negative territory for 2018. Well, now you're going to start testing where it was uh, during those whole Senate hearings. Um, and, and that becomes an issue. This is going to retest lows. Uh, as I said, uh, I think investors may take a wait and see attitude from this. Uh, they got the worst case scenario uh, and they're, you know, they're not rewarding the stock because of that. So is it a buy in this level? Um, I, I don't know. At least not today. It's probably not a buy. Uh, what does this mean for market leadership? I mean, does this just make the banks more attractive right now? Yeah, there's going to be a sector rotation. Uh, and that some of the FANG names are going to receive more money, uh, especially if Amazon performs. It's going to drag the whole sector up. So it's a huge, huge weight on Amazon uh, you know, tonight for their earnings and the overall market. Uh, and as I mentioned, you know, energy was a, the biggest positive performer in Q1 that it could take up another leadership role here as we get to end of close of uh, Q2 and into uh, Q3. And just more broadly, explain why FANG stocks have been so important to the broader markets. Well, five or six of these stocks have led them all the market gains this year. So if we're gonna start taking those market leaders out, where are they gonna find a home for all that money? And that's the question. Uh, these have been so successful, so widely held, that if people are starting to sell them, uh, there's going to be a difference of opinion on where they put their money. So uh, you're not going to see that monumental gain in one sector. Should investors start to differentiate between FANG and technology stocks? Because if you look at advanced micro devices, I mean, they posted their best earnings in seven years. That's obviously a chip maker. What's your outlook on that sector? Well, the chips, you know, perform pretty well as well. So they're not in the FANGs necessarily, but they uh, perform pretty well. So you're going to have to find a differentiator at this point. Not all FANG stocks are created equal. We're going to learn that qu pretty quickly here. Uh, you know, with Netflix and, and Facebook, you know, being on one side and maybe Microsoft and hopefully Amazon and Apple on the other side, at least for investors' sake. So um, you're going to find a differentiator. Uh, the chip stocks, again, you know, they take their individual beatings when they report, when they start talking about not being able to provide chips to certain companies, you see those stocks individually. Because suffer. of tariffs. Because of tariffs. And well, we got that yesterday. We saw that huge rally. So that's a wild card in this market as well. But the tech stocks have been insulated somewhat from the tariffs. Chip stocks haven't, but the other tech stocks haven't. Yeah, we know that chip stocks, many of them have exposure to China, which is, of course, a worry for investors. Correct, absolutely. That's probably the biggest worry now, that the EU-US tariff war could potentially be over. <laughs> okay, so give us your final thoughts here. I mean, in terms of the S&P 500, to your point, we rallied sharply on Wednesday following those reports that President Trump has, has received some concessions on EU trade. Yeah, you know... I, w I was of the camp that we would see a rally toward the highs, uh, you know, over the next month and a half. Uh, we certainly saw how the market reacted to that news. It was positive and it was quick. Um, so this Facebook hopefully is a one-off. Hopefully it doesn't cloud the whole market. Uh, and maybe the S&P does get a boost from some of the other sectors that will see that flow. Okay, Matthew Cheslock, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much as always. Sure.